Blessed, most merciful Heavenly Father, Lord, I come before you humbly, Lord, and I beg and I plead, Lord, you give me the courage, the will, the words, the wisdom to speak. And Lord, I pray that you be your words, Lord, not my words, they be your words, Lord. And I give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. I am just the dust of the earth, and no one is beneath me. And the only thing that's special about me is that I am forgiven, and I am God's dirt. Uh, now, I cannot speak for other watchmen, but I know, I know, I was called for this work because I had a very hard calling. You see, when I was called, I didn't even know what a watchman was. I'd never even heard that word before. And it was the Holy Spirit that called me a, uh, called me a watchman. I did not name myself a watchman. And I was, I was shown this scripture, Ezekiel 33 and 6. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I, requ will I require at the watchman's hand. A warning for those who call themselves a watchman, but are not called by God. But when I was asked to speak publicly, I balked. I said, no, thank you, Lord. I am not a public speaker. And I would stutter and stammer, and I would forget my words. And I'd be shaking so hard, I'd forget everything. But the Holy Spirit, he kept on, he kept on asking me to be his watchman and, and to speak. After several weeks of this, then one night, I was made an offer that I could not refuse. And I thought God almost killed me to get my attention. I was reminded that Moses had a very bad stutter and was not a public speaker, so I was in good company. And I was told that, that I had a connection with Jonah, as Jonah also told God no, and he ran from God. But Jonah ended up in, in Nineveh just like I ran from God, and we both ended up in our Nineveh. When God wants you for a work, God will not accept your no answer. And if you try to reason or argue with God, you'll find that you lose before you even start your argument. I was told that I had a connection with Noah, as Noah was a preacher for 120 years while he built on the ark. And Noah had only one message every Sabbath when he preached, and his message was, to repent of sin and enter the ark for safety. But no one came to hear him preach except his family, and no one entered the ark except for Noah and his family. I also have only one message, and that message is to repent of sin, to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The very first time that I stood up in my, ch in my church, I spoke what the Holy Spirit had given me to speak. And with tears streaming down my face, as I was terrified if I didn't speak. And this was in 2014. I told of a time coming, called the time of sorrows or birth pains, and all the calamities that would be coming. War, earthquakes, riots, looting, lawlessness, many fires, food would, food, uh, would increase in price and get so expensive that people could not afford to hardly eat. And meat would be some, become so scarce and very expensive. Food would just keep going up and up and up and, and become even more scarce until one day you could not even afford to buy food anymore at any price. Energy, gas, electricity, propane, all forms of energy would go to astronomical rates and just keep rising. There would be major power outages. They would be here and there and then one day there would be no more power. Our economy would totally collapse and our cash would become worthless paper. Everything paper would be totally worthless, stocks, bonds, insurance policies, and the government would default, bringing much chaos to America. Then everyone would hit the streets and mob rule would come to America. Riots, food riots, energy riots, food stamp riots, everyone would be rioting, protesting for some reason and the mobs would take over much of the country and there'd be much fires looting until the entire country seems to have gone mad and many people will kill for no reason. Earthquakes, tsunamis, 
would kill many thousands of people. There would be flooding in parts of the country and serious droughts, drought in other parts of the country. There would be no police, no fire departments, no ambulances, no hospitals, and if you get in trouble, no one would care and no one would come to help you. Who would work anywhere at any job if they were afraid to leave their home unprotected? And besides, no one is getting paid, so no one works for free. And that holds true for everyone. Even power plant operators will not show up for work if they are not getting paid. Paid in some form or another, that would actually have a value to it. Gold and silver will become worthless as they cannot feed you and they, can, they cannot keep you warm. Only food, clean water, medications, propane, firewood, medical supplies, camping supplies, and the like will have any real value in a barter society, as that is where we are headed. Then I proceeded to tell them what was coming in the tribulation and all the horrors I was shown. I told them about fallen angels walking the earth again, killing one third of mankind. And that's from Revelation 19, 14, and 15. I told them about famine coming and how people would resort to eating bugs, grass, leaves, anything to ease their hunger pains. I told them about pestilences, diseases that were coming that would destroy over a billion people. Remember, this was in 2014. I told them about a massive earthquake so powerful that it would hit on the west coast of America and it would cause other earthquakes to rupture. Now that first earthquake would be a 9.4 or greater. It would start in the Cascadia Rift area off of California, Oregon, and Washington coast. Then there would be a massive tsunami, so huge and so powerful, that it would cause a change in the Earth's rotation speed so that it would shorten our day. The earthquake would cause a chain reaction of earthquakes followed by a massive earthquake in California from the Bay Area down to San Diego. The entire West Coast would be destroyed by earthquakes and by tsunamis. The New Madrid Fault and Southern Missouri would rupture, causing a rift in the Mississippi River Basin, basically dividing America from top to bottom. Then an asteroid would strike in the Atlantic Ocean and cause a massive tsunami hundreds of feet high to crash into the entire East Coast of America. And all of this earthquake and tsunami activity would cause the earth to reel to and fro like a drunkard and change the length of the day, Isaiah 24 and 20. War is coming to America. I saw foreign troops on American soil. I saw nuclear weapons being detonated over several large American cities. I told them all this was with, I told them all this with tears streaming down my face because the Holy Spirit told me to speak and I knew America would be destroyed. So I spoke. I was afraid not to speak. But I think most of them didn't believe me. The pastor spoke up and said that America was so big that if one area could not produce food, then there would be other areas that would produce food and enough for all, of them, all Americans. So, nine years later, how is that theory holding up? A couple of months later, Satan crawled up on my shoulder. He whispered into my ear. He said, you get invited to church and now you think you're Moses. This kind of shocked me. And I didn't know what to really think of this. And, and quite frankly, I was a little scared. I was a little, and it really shook me. But then a couple months later, one Sunday early in the morning, about 1.30, the Holy Spirit woke me up and told me to write down a message. So I turned on my nightstand light beside my bed and I grabbed a piece of paper and I began to write down what he gave me to write. It was only four words, a very short message. So I wrote it down and I folded the piece of paper and placed it on my nightstand and I turned off the light and I quickly fell back asleep. And we went to Sunday school just like we had been doing for a while. And Brother Danny, he was the Sunday school teacher, and we listened intently and followed, followed along in our Bible. Then all of a sudden, without skipping a beat, as part of the lesson, he said, Be not afraid, speak. I thought, did I just hear that from Brother Danny? Was that a message from God through Brother Danny? 
But then it was only about five minutes later, he said it again, a second time. And again, without skipping a beat, as part of his lesson, he said, be not afraid, speak. I, I, was, I was floored. I, then I knew, then I knew that I had been given a message through Brother, Brother Danny from God. And on the way home, I was explaining excitedly how I had gotten a message from God through Brother Danny. And I don't think he even realized it. After all, God had been dealing with me to, with my heart to start speaking again. When I got home, I went straight to bed like I normally did. After getting home from church, I take a nap. The Holy Spirit woke me up about an hour later and, re and reminded me that I had a note that he had given me at 1.30 a.m. that morning. And he prompted me to get up and read it. So I sat up. I found the note. I unfolded it. And when I opened the note, I almost fainted. And my knees began to knock. I was in awe. It was unbelievable. But there it was, staring at me right in the face. My note from the Holy Spirit, written by my own hand. And that note read, be not afraid, speak. That gives me chills. That gives me chills. But it gets even better than that. That very same evening, for whatever reason, I felt compelled to do this. I don't know why. I started thumbing through the pages of the Bible. And as the pages flew past my thumb, I stopped. Without looking, I took my index finger and I just pointed to a Bible verse. And that verse was Acts 18 and 9. Then spoke the Lord to Paul by a night vision. Speak, hold not thy peace. I got chills again. Mm -hmm. God is so amazing. So amazing if we only let him be. I started to speak again. And today, today, I offer to speak at almost any venue or church. I am invited to speak at. I now do not fear public speaking. I consider it a privilege and an honor to give my testimony so that others may be inspired, that my testimony might strengthen the faithful and lead people to give their hearts to Jesus Christ. Amen. As there is no salvation or safety from what is to come except through Jesus Christ. Deuteronomy 19 and 15, at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses, shall a matter be established. How many people today are having rapture dreams, dreams of the tribulation, dreams of hell? All manner of prophetic dreams are coming from all kinds of people, believers and non-believers alike. If you don't believe me, fine, believe others with dreams and visions who are or were watchmen in the service of the Lord, like David Wilkerson, Dimitri Dudeman, Henry Groover, and many others. YouTube is now covered up with people who have prophetic dreams of the last days. Or believe the Bible, bad times are coming, and you need to prepare. Now I know exactly what you're thinking. I'll buy food and water, water filters, guns, ammo, medical supplies, and the like. But your preps will not save you. Remember, at the mouth of two or three witnesses. Only Jesus can save anyone from what is to come. So prepare with Jesus, as he should be your very first prep. I was commanded to wake up and tell the people. And that is what I have attempted to do every day of my Christian walk. I do not place, do not place your faith or trust in a preacher, a teacher, a prophet, watchman, or even or any faith, religion, church, not even me. Only place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and his word, in his word in the King James Bible. I know, I know, I'm, I'm a realistic, I could look in the mirror. I know I'm overweight, I'm fat, I'm old, I'm ugly. Uh, and I have a very, very bad left knee. I can hardly walk anymore. But in heaven, in heaven, I will be beautiful. I'll be young, no health, no health problems. God will wipe away every tear and there will be no more pain or suffering for anyone. We will all be perfect as God is perfect and we will live forever young and glorified bodies. Heaven will be worth all of our trials and calamities we will experience here on this earth. I think God sees us like we will be in heaven and I prefer to see people how I imagine them to be in heaven with beautiful, perfect bodies, no weight problems, no health problems, color in our hair and a spring in our step. 
as heaven is perfect, as God is perfect. And we will be with the God and, and we will be perfect as well. But remember, those who have a stain, a blemish, a spot, or a wrinkle in their garments will not be allowed in. So now is the time to deal with your sin issues. You may have that that, that, that you may have that will hold you back from being raptured. And you will not want to miss the rapture. As for those left behind, now all I will say is that is this is that it will be hell on earth, literally. Unbelievable, unspeakable, unimaginable horror awaits all those who end up in the tribulation. And you do not want to be left behind. We love you like family, and we pray for you like family, because you are family. Yes. Remember, the only way to survive what is to come is to not be here, as in being raptured. We are all, all of us, every one of us, we are all precious children of the Most High Living God, who loves us so very much, more than all the gold of the earth, and more than all the stars of heaven. Did he not prove it by sending his only begotten Son to this earth to die? A cruel death for you and for me. He shed his precious blood for us. He died for us. And his death paid our sin debt as we could never pay that price on our own. So Jesus paid it for us. He paid it for me and for you with his very blood and his very life. So what are you willing to do for Jesus in these last days? We will see you on the streets of gold on that day. I remind you that I am nothing special. I am nothing special. I am just the dust of the earth. And I, I am only what God says that I am. Nothing more and nothing less. God bless you. God keep you in yours. And we keep all of you in our prayers. With much love and more grace from above. Amen. 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 Anybody have a scripture they want to read? I have Romans 16 to 32, and this is clear counsel from God and the way people are living today, and God is not going to stand for it. These people are not going to go to heaven. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God into salvation, everyone that believeth, to the first the Jews, and also to the Greeks. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. It is written, the just, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him, not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and the foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise, and they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God gave also them up to unclean through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshiped and served the cre creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Amen. For this cause God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women did change their natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men leave in the natural use of their women, burned in their lust, one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, receiving in themselves that recompense of the error which was met. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to, to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignancy, and whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without breaking, without understanding, 
covenant breakers. That means those who were married and decided to put their wife away and marry again. That is evil in God's eyes. Without natural affection, and placeable, and merciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that which would commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them, that do them. God is not going to give any excuse to these people, because they were totally warned yep. by the watchman, and how to live, yep. and how to live holy. Amen. Yep. And as it was in the days of Noah, yes. so shall it also be yes. in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. That day is drawing very close. Yes, it is. Do you have a scripture to read? Okay. Okay. God bless you all. We'll keep you all in our prayers and we love you. Amen. Amen.